Hello and welcome to The Flicksters, the place where two geeks bring you all the movie reviews and news you can ever wish for. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook. And download our podcast on iTunes, Anchor, Pocket Cast, CastBox and Google Play. Good afternoon, ladies and gents, and welcome to another episode of The Flicksters, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Wow, 2001, A Space Odyssey. And I, and I think this is like, it's in, in the top, I think it's in the UK top 20 at the moment. So this is a re-release. You know, it's been 50 years since, the, since this film came out. Wow. And uh, I have to tell you, the first time that I saw this film was when I was like about 15 or 16 years old. And I got to tell you, it went over my head. Mm, okay. Yeah, like I yeah. watched the first 25 minutes of it and I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, yeah. It's just, just too much for me. Yeah. Right. And then I think probably like 10 or 15 years later after that, I saw it on TV or something and I started watching it and maybe I got past like say 35 minutes this yeah. time, but you know what? It was still over yeah. my head. And it, when I found out that it was being released, I was like, you know what? I have to watch this film properly. Mm. I'm older. I kind of see things differently now. So maybe I'm going to get, you know, something out of this film. So, uh, so 2001 a space odyssey, uh, made in 1968, directed by Stanley Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick and written in conjunction with a scientist called Arthur C. Clarke. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah. So as they were making the film, Arthur C. Clarke had a lot of input in this. And he also wrote a book as well called Mm. 2001 A Space Odyssey. So it was kind of like, you know, a joint thing produced by Stanley Stanley Kubrick. And Stanley Kubrick had made like films like Full Metal Jacket, Mm, you know, classic director, The Shining, Eyes Wide Shut most recently with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. So he's kind of like, you know, in in the world of film, Stanley Kubrick is this master. Yeah. Okay. So I I started watching this movie, and I, and after I watched it, I just thought to myself, right, how am I going to re- review this movie? Because it is visually, it's absolutely stunning. Mm-hmm. It's more of a visual journey for someone to watch rather than I can just tell you, right, this is what happens. This is this is plot you know this is point a this is point b and this is point c so the way i'm going to look at it is like this i could sit here and say to you devout watch it it's directed by stanley kubrick and it's got 50 years worth of history people have written about it people have made documentaries about it people have kind of made uh, created theories about this but i'm not going to say that what i'm going to say is if you have or if you are at a stage in your life where you can sit down and watch a movie where there's very little dialogue where not a lot happens, but there are subliminal messages within this movie. Or if you're, if, if you can watch a film where you have to do a lot of thinking, then I would say watch this film because okay. it is broken down into three parts. Okay. So it starts off with uh, the first stage. Uh, the, the first part of the movie is, 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 I think it's called like the dawn of man. Mm. So what yeah. happens is it starts off with, a version of man which is still kind of like half ape and, and, and mo- moving into the kind of realm of you know being able to stand up and n- not and being able to communicate so you see this um somewhere on earth you know uh you see these apes living together you see them being attacked by another group of apes so they're territorial and amidst this there's a massive monolith that appears one night when I was watching this film, I just thought, this is, this is madness. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, there's no dialogue. There's just like, you know, a, a, an absolutely mesmerizing score. And there's this monolith that turns up and, you know, you've got the apes, they start uh, touching it. And it's from this moment, the ape or our ancestors have processed something and have started to think. Mm. So by touching the monolith, mm. by seeing this monolith, they are then now on this journey to self-discovery yeah. and it then helps these apes to y- use weapons. Mm, and evolve. And evolve. Yeah. Okay. There, there's a, a really iconic scene where the apes, they kill a, a, another ape using a, a, a bone and the ape throws the, the bone in the air. And then as the, uh, the bone is being thrown into the air, you cut to a scene in space where man now has evolved so much, you know, they've created weapons from that bone, which was the first weapon. 
to now like kind of like a space weapon. So then this is kind of like the second part of the movie where we learn about, okay, what what has man achieved, how how people have evolved. So this film kind of poses the question that there's been such a massive leap and it's because of, not because of, but th- this monolith has something to do with it. And it instigated the self-discovery of apes, which would then lead into so many other advancements. That's so genius. So, so far you're with me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listeners, I hope you're still, I hope you're with me on this one. <laughs> it does get interesting. So we're on the space station and the story has now kind of moved from, from us being apes into us being colonizers of space. We are masters of new technology and the vision that Stanley Kubrick had. I thought this is like the special effects are amazing and how he's able to show just how advanced people are now and the link between the dawn of man into kind of like, you know, the, the age that, you know, is, is there right now, I thought was, was absolutely fantastic. So the story then progresses in that a mission is, is created because another monolith has been discovered. Oh yes, yes, yes. So we had the monolith in, you know, where the ape, which the ape saw and then now another monolith. And through the story, we realize that that monolith has been on the planet for millions of years Mm. so they do like a a carbon carbon dating Mm. so clearly there is a link between the monolith from what we saw in the first part of the movie to what we're seeing right now and then the film jumps from that point once they discover the monolith the film quickly jumps 18 months into the future and now there is a mission to discover where the monolith has come from and this is kind of like where you get to the main drama of, of, of the film here. So you've got two members of the crew and you have a an artificial intelligence called Hal. Mm. And I, when I was watching this film, I, I likened Hal to, uh, do you remember David from uh, Aliens? Aliens. Yep, yep, yep. The, I tell you what, I just I just thought I was just listening yep. to um, uh, oh, Michael. Prometheus, Th- oh, Prometheus, sorry. Pr- yeah, Prometheus, yeah. yeah. I, I thought I was just listening to to Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Like you can clearly see the kind of link between that David yeah, and this Hal. For sure. And you know, when you watch Prometheus and you watched Alien Covenant, you knew there was something sinister. Well, I always got the feeling that David was sinister. Yeah. Same thing with Hal. Hal is like kind of a like one step ahead mm. of these two space crew members. So they're on a mission to Jupiter to find out where this monolith has come from. And then there's this whole kind of dynamic between the space crew and Hal, the master and the student who is more intelligent. And there's this brilliant, brilliant struggle in the movie where, where Hal takes over. Hal seemingly kind of loses its mind and kills uh, one of the crew members. Oh, wow. Because Hal, unbeknownst to the other crew members, is on a secret mission. Oh. So there's this struggle between man and machine. Yeah. And in, amidst all this struggle, I'm trying to obviously keep it light over here. Amidst all this struggle, the one of the the, the, the crew members he sees an, another monolith. Oh my! So there are now three monoliths, and he he then journeys into the monolith. He goes interstellar. Wow! And you know the scene in um in Interstellar, and yeah. but you know the scene in Thor Ragnarok. You know where they um where Thor and Loki. Oh yes, they go through they 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 go through the uh, the rainbow bridge. The, the rainbow bridge, the, yeah. And you know what? You can clearly see okay, where they got okay, their yes, um, yes, 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 yeah. Where they got their kind of inspiration from? Yeah. Because this guy goes through the rainbow bridge to another dimension. Oh, I've got to see this film again. I, I tell you what, I've this, got it. I see it again. this this film is this is so deep. So the the crew member then you know goes through the rainbow bridge and he ends up in another place, uh, another dimension, or does he? Mm. these are the questions that you need to kind of ask yourself he ends up in another dimension and he sees himself but in the future he sees himself growing old he sees himself become as you if you want to call it one with the universe oh wow and then he then the film ends with him seeing another monolith okay so i'm not going to kind of speak about what happens to him but that's something that you'll need to kind of think about and decide upon but I just want to say one thing as a piece of filmmaking it's absolutely visual 
that you'd be like, wow, how the hell they managed to pull this off in 1968 with those special effects, I thought was absolutely fantastic. It asks so many different questions. For example, who we are, where do we come from? Yeah. Is this such a thing as God? Are we, you know, as humans, are we really in control of things? Are we really moving too fast in terms of technology? You've got all these deep kind of like, you know, questions. And I just thought for its day, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. But like I said before, you have to be in the right frame of mind to watch this because like the first three minutes of the movie is just a black screen. Wow. And just music. Okay. There's the first 20 minutes. Uh, there's no dialogue. Are you serious? I'm, I'm being serious. Okay. There are okay. so many parts of the movie where there's no dialogue, but it's all visual. Yeah. So this is Stanley Kubrick being a master. This is why they call him like, you know, a master of, of, of film here, where he's just visually just telling the story. And a lot of people will say, oh, you've got to read the book because the book goes into more detail. And I think there was this kind of this conflict between Arthur C. Clarke and uh, Stanley Kubrick where... Stanley was coming from it at a, a visionary kind of way and uh, Arthur C. Clarke was kind of explaining things in a literary way. Yeah. But I think the two go hand in hand. But the intended, uh, he intended for this film to be seen and for you to not get it first time. Okay. If you don't get it, that that's what he actually wanted. Oh, wow. Because I think I did try and tackle this film just like you said as well. And I, it didn't really sink in. I, I, I couldn't watch so, it like all those times, but now I kind of see it on on a, on a different level. Okay. So if you are not into your sci-fi films, obviously you're not going to watch this, but if you're into your sci-fi films and you just want it, if you want to be like fed, you know, slot A goes into slot B, then uh, don't watch this film. But <laughs> if you want to watch, see a film and think to yourself, right, okay, what is, what is the, why did the director show that image? Why did the, you know, the ape throw the, you know the bone in the air what's that got to do with the future so if you if you if you're happy doing that then i would definitely watch it if not then i'll just say basically just forget about it because there are <laughs> like i said before there are loads of parts in it where no one speaks okay. yeah but for me i just thought yeah this what everyone says about this movie is is absolutely true so i'd say go go out there and watch it Deval, if you can i will definitely thank you that's a really good review actually. thank you yeah i got there in the end <laughs> remember to like and subscribe us and if you don't we will follow you <laughs> i like that <laughs> devout where can people follow us they can follow us uh twitter facebook instagram and youtube always we're always posting stuff on youtube so have a look at our youtube channel and if you have any suggestions or if you want any movies for us to review please do let us know in the comments send us a picture of you uh whatever it is get in touch we will be more than happy to to engage with you most definitely thanks a lot for listening guys and we'll see you again next week bye peace out <laughs>